I've tested all 39 ways to make direct profit from crops and 90% of them are completely unprofitable. Let me present to you the results of an experiment I've conducted over the past several dozen hours and answer many pressing questions. The first of which is likely, but how are there 39 ways to profit from crops when there are only 25 crops? We do have 25 crops, but oilseed radish is only used as a fertilizer. However, grass can not only be sold directly, but also turned into hay or silage. Corn on the other hand can be harvested for grain or processed into silage. And if that's not enough silage for you, we can also make it from all grain crops and sunflowers. I've checked which crops are worth making silage from and which ones to avoid. Additionally, grain crops can be harvested in the usual way, but with the exception of sorghum, they can also be harvested by swathing. I've also checked for you whether this is profitable. And that's how we end up with 39 methods. As if that weren't enough, I've also conducted two bonus tests. Whether there's any difference between harvesting green and yellow corn for silage and whether it's worth adding silage additives. These extra tests are included in this video. Of course, crop fun doesn't end in the field. Many crops can be used to feed animals or further processed in factories, but we'll cover that in upcoming episodes where we'll delve deeper into the economics of Farming Simulator 25. So make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss anything. To make everything clear and understandable, let me explain the conditions under which this experiment was conducted. This is the test field and it measures exactly 10 airs. All the results I'll share will be calculated per hectare to help with comparisons in future videos. To achieve maximum yield, I disabled all possible constraints. However, mulching and rolling couldn't be turned off. So before cultivation, I mulched the field. If rolling was required after sowing, I did that as well. Of course, I fertilized all the crops twice, achieving the ideal 100% yield this way. If this is clear to everyone, let's begin with grain crops, as these are the crops you'll start growing when selecting the new farmer mode with the starting farm. When it comes to yield per hectare, the smallest storage space will be required for soybeans, producing just under 9,000 liters per hectare. On the other hand, if you choose barley, you'll need more than double the storage capacity. I don't think this comes as a big surprise, so let's move on to the more interesting part, profit per hectare. Here's another important note. The prices I use to calculate profits are maximum prices I observed over five in-game years. These are prices in the normal difficulty mode. In hard mode, prices will be 80% lower than these. In easy mode, they will be 40% higher. This is a consistent adjustment, meaning that while the exact values will differ depending on the difficulty, the ranking of crops based on profitability will remain unchanged. For crops that produce straw, the yield was the same for all. 7,265 liters on the test field. The maximum price for straw is 90, meaning the profit from straw per hectare is 6,539. Here's an important note. This accounts for one third of the total profit, so collecting straw is definitely worth it. Now let's take a look at the total profit per hectare for each grain crops, with straw already factored in for those crops that produce it. Interestingly, canola ranks last. Once a profitability king, it seems its golden years in farming simulation later are over. On the other hand, it's probably no surprise that soybeans are in first place, as they've been highly profitable since their introduction. However, apart from canola and sorghum, there aren't significant differences between the crops. But remember, this is total profit. You'll also need to invest in equipment for collecting straw. Without straw, crops that produce it would drop to the bottom of the rankings. Speaking of investments, all grain crops except sorghum can also be harvested by swathing. This means you first cut the them with a special mower and then collect the grain using a combine equipped with a special header. When harvesting grain this way, the yield increases for every crop by roughly 25%. What surprised me is that the straw yield also increases by the same 25%. I'm not sure if this reflects real world mechanics, logically it seems odd, but I'm no expert so if anyone has more knowledge on this, the comments are yours. I'd love to know if this might just be a game bug. Regardless, to sum up swathing, while it requires a bit more work and investment, it provides a significantly higher profit, and I personally think it's a very worthwhile investment. Before moving on to the overall crop profitability rankings, let's first look at the promised silage experiments. The maximum price for silage I observed was 222, so that's the value we'll use for calculations. Since this price is fixed, we can skip the yield ranking and jump straight to the profit per hectare. First place, no surprise here, it's corn, specifically green corn. In a moment, I'll explain whether it's more profitable than yellow corn.
Capricorn. Second place, Grass. However, grass earns this spot only theoretically. In practice, it's even better. You can mow grass multiple times a year, and since it only needs to be planted once, it can be harvested indefinitely. For this reason, I'd personally rank grass in first place overall. As for other crops, you can make silage from them for fun, but I'd least recommend soybeans. They have the lowest yield. Now about green versus yellow corn and harvesting other crops in their green or yellow stages. Here's the result of my experiment, or rather, a busted myth. There's no difference in yield between green and yellow stages for corn or other crops. It's purely a visual effect, with identical yields regardless of maturity. Finally, let's talk about silage additives. This magic liquid boosts silage production by 5% and you'll use 4 liters per hectare. If I remember correctly, in Farming Simulator 22, you couldn't add it directly to forage harvesters, though I might be wrong, so feel free to correct me in the comments. In Farm Sim 25, however, if you add it to your forage harvester, you'll see that 5% yield boost. The additive costs 2,990 for 60 liters, meaning it's 50 per liter. At 4 liters per hectare, you'll spend 200 to gain 5% more profit per hectare. In my opinion, this is absolutely worth the investment. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to kick off the segment you've all been waiting for, the ultimate showdown to determine which crop is the most profitable. Let's start with the yield per hectare rankings. At the bottom, we have olives and grapes required the smallest storage space at just 8,600 liters per hectare. Next comes soybeans, followed by peas and cotton. Moving up, sunflowers break the 10,000 liter mark, and from there, the yields only increase until we reach the podium. Third place, corn silage. Second place, poplar. First place, sugarcane, topping the charts. But be warned, storing it won't be easy since it can't go into a standard silo. That's the yield ranking. Let me know in the comments if anything surprised you. Now let's move on to the most important part of today's episode, profit per hectare. At the bottom of the table, we have grass. If you're looking to make money, I wouldn't recommend selling it, whether directly or as hay. Instead, it's much better to use it for feeding animals, a topic we'll cover in the next episode, so subscribe so you don't miss it. As for crops with high equipment costs, neither olives nor grapes are known for their profitability. But now let's get to what we all care about, the crops with the highest profits per hectare. the podium. Third place, sugar beet. Second place, sugar cane. First place, poplar. So we could say this is a rather sweet podium. Numbers and theories say one thing, but when you take a practical look at the top crops, it's tough to decide which one will bring you quick and substantial profits. These two goals rarely align perfectly. That's why I've done some extra calculations just for you, to create a tier list of the most practical crops, focusing only on those with the highest profit per hectare. Let's start with the poplar, and if you've been playing the game for a while, you'll already know its biggest downside. Planting poplar is a monumental task, it's extremely time consuming. I maximize the use of my test field by planting it fully, which isn't entirely realistic. In real world terms, you should plant every other row. Even if you have the profit due to proper planting, it would still rank at the top in terms of profitability. Theoretically, harvesting isn't too bad, but it does require a forage harvester with a very small header. You'll either have to drive alongside it with a tractor and trailer, or attach a trailer to the harvester, periodically swapping trailers. So while not ideal, harvesting is manageable. Storage presents a significant problem. Not only does poplar yield massive amounts per hectare, requiring many trips to haul it all, but it also can't be stored in silos. You'll need to store it under a shed or on the field itself, which means additional time spent reloading when you're ready to sell. Fun fact, for those who've stuck with me this far, here's an interesting comparison about planting time. Using a 1 meter wide planter for poplar, traveling at 8, it would take 75 minutes to plant 1 hectare. Assuming perfect conditions with no stopping or turning. In contrast, using the largest grain seeder in the game, 15 meters wide, at its maximum speed of 16, you could sow the same 1 hectare field in just 2.5 minutes. This highlights how planting poplar is an exhausting process. So, while poplar can be harvested multiple times and boasts high profitability, the challenges of planting and storage make it far less practical. For these reasons, I'd rank it second to last.
last on the tier list. Next, we have Sugarcane, which won the competition for the highest yield per hectare. As with Poplar, we cannot store it in silos, so loading such large amounts with a wheel loader or conveyors will be very time consuming. When it comes to sowing, it's a bit better, as it takes around 25 minutes per hectare with the largest seeder. This is still 10 times slower than grains, but 3 times faster than Poplar. However, Sugarcane can be also harvested multiple times, so we only need to sow it once. After that, it's just harvest, which in theory should be faster with sugarcane because the working width is the same as with poplar, but the working speed is greater. Still, due to storage issues, I would place sugarcane on the same level as poplar in the practical table. Next, we have sugar beets, which in terms of storage are similar to the previous crops. However, when it comes to sowing, we do need to plant them anew every time, but we have access to a cedar that is even larger than the largest one for grains, so there are no problems here. The harvests are also not very slow, but due to storage issues, I would place them just slightly above sugarcane and poplar. Next is carrots, and due to how we harvest not only carrots, but also other root vegetables, this results in a total disqualification and a position at the very bottom of the table. The harvest takes ages, and the self-propelled harvester doesn't have a tank, so fully automating this is practically impossible, as no worker will drive this harvester for us. For potatoes, I would place them slightly below sugar beets, because we don't have such a large seed. But the largest one is still not that slow or small. The harvests aren't a major issue either. Next, we have parsnips and similarly, they rank low like carrots. After that, we have corn for silage, which has fast sowing, relatively quick harvesting and minor storage issues. So I would place it high, but not the highest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Silage Simulator. When it comes to grass silage in bales, the only downside is that the worker won't bale the grass for us. However, you only need to sow it once and it's done quite quickly. With seasonal growth, we can even harvest more than once a year. Additionally, we can quickly load it using an auto loading trailer, so storage isn't a big problem. I would also place soybeans in the top spot, because even though we make less money on them per year than on grass silage, we can easily work on a large area with workers who will practically do everything for us, so it's also an interesting choice. As for crops between corn for silage and soybeans, red beets like carrots have terrible harvests, while rice requires a lot of effort because it needs a special field and has slow harvesting. To summarize, if you're up for baling, I'd choose grass, but if you're lazy, go for soybeans because the workers will do everything for you quickly with large machines and most importantly, you can load and unload it into silo. The rest of the crops are fun to grow, unless factories and animals are involved but more on that in future episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to avoid missing them. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and share your thoughts in the comments because you might have a different opinion and I'd love to hear it. See you soon.